me, Janelle. Welcome back to me, Casa. What I want to talk to you tonight is about love and hate lists. Making lists. Okay, throughout this whole pandemic, relationships have definitely been tested on all levels. People who have been stuck living together for over a year now, some of them realize, wow, I really am with the right person. Like, we haven't killed each other yet. Or the other people who are like, I want to get this person out of my life as soon as possible. Okay, sometimes things aren't always that black and white. Sometimes you're just sort of confused as to how you feel about somebody. And so you decide to make a list of pros and cons, right? A love and a hate list. Things I love about you, things I hate about you. I'm just gonna argue straight up front that if you actually need to make a list to figure out if you should stay in a relationship, I don't think you should probably be in this relationship. You shouldn't have to make a list to figure out if you should stay or you should go, right? But that being said, sometimes writing things down does clarify it for you. So at the end of your list making, if you have a long list of yeses or a long list of noes, you might want to make a difference in your life. You might want to say, okay, maybe I really have to find a way to get out of this relationship. And it's not just with men and women and husbands and wives and lovers or whatever. It can be anything in your life that you're worried isn't working. You can make love and hate lists about your job. Like, are you in a job where you're not advancing or you're not making the money you want or you're not being appreciated and it's nagging at you? Well, make up your list and see if it's time to start looking for a change. Only you can dig into yourself and figure out if the relationships and the situations of your life are what you want them to be. So if it takes making a list to clarify that for you, then I say go for it, make your list. But the fact that you want to make a list and you need to make a list tells me it's time to make a change. Okay, so I've made lists before in my life. Um, not that often, but I have done it. You know, when I was in a job, let's say, and I was like, okay, there's all this good, but what is not fulfilling me as a person, or what is not working? And the same thing with a relationship, like even with friends. And I've made lists this year, the last few years, when I was changing my life and trying to change my career, um, I had to kind of like change a lot about me. I, I, I didn't have the money to spend to go out anymore. Um, I had to cut back on a lot of things in my life. and. I could only have really supportive and understanding and loving friends around me. And sometimes that process of cleaning out your life just happens naturally when you change your energy and only allow good vibrations around you. And what do I mean by that? You only allow healthy people who are supportive of you. So if your husband or your wife or your lover doesn't make you feel good about who you are, and you know, do you need the list? I don't know. Anyway, make your stupid list, figure out what you like, figure out what you want to do, who you want to be with, because you only have this ride in it, and you want to make it the best one you can be, and being stuck in a relationship, a job, a friendship, with people who don't appreciate you, who love you, respect you, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Happiness and your mental and emotional health are so important. So anyway, for all people out there who are considering, they consider themselves being my friend, here are 10 reasons why if you're my friend, you're on the list that I made up. Here are things that are important to me. Number one, when I text you or call you, you text or call me back. Uh-huh, it doesn't take much to text back, okay? You leave a message, you gotta respond at some point. It doesn't have to be a whole conversation, but you acknowledge my existence. I matter enough to you that you make uh, an effort to connect with me. No matter how much time has passed or how much time has gone between we seeing each other or how busy our lives are, we both know our friendship is strong enough to withstand time. But you know what? If I text you, please text me back. So if you're my friend, you'll be saying, ooh, how appropriate is this? Making lists, should I stay or should I go? Hmm, okay. I love this song. Okay, anyway, so if you're my friend, you stay on my friend list if you do those things. Number two, when I make a stupid, dumb, Sagittarian, dumbass blonde comment, and as you know me well enough to know that it was not intended to be malicious at all, you therefore either choose to ignore my stupidity or my blonde moments, or you may point it out that it came across the wrong way, but you don't hold it against me. True friends understand each other's faults and accept them as part of our uniquenesses. And I'm definitely unique, okay? Number three, when we go out to eat, you don't expect me to split the bill. You understand that I'm on a budget. 
and you let me pay for what I've consumed. You recognize that sometimes twenty dollars is a big deal. Okay, this one really bugs me. Okay, so I, you know, I'm on a super tight budget or whatever's going on in my life. But you go out with friends that have more money than you, and they order like the lobster thermidor, and you order a plate of plain pasta with a side of butter, and the bill comes at two hundred dollars, and they say, "Oh, that's a hundred bucks each," and you're like, "What the fuck? No." Real friends don't put that kind of pressure on another friend, and they understand that you can only pay what you can afford to pay. And why am I paying for the food that you're eating anyway? Anyway, okay. Uh, number four, you know that I'm a terrible driver, and I have night blindness, so you don't mind picking me up. Or you don't become irritated if my Uber driver doesn't show up in time. Plus, you don't make fun of me for walking towards you, wearing my flip-flops on my feet and my high heels on my bed. You get that is just me. And everybody who's ever driven with me never wants to drive with me again. So Ethel, my friend Ethel, Hetty Ethel there, you are like my best wing woman when it comes to going out and driving, I will say. And you know that. <laughs> Number five, you understand that clothes are important to me, even on a budget. And you can totally get how I can rationalize eating gluten-free ramen noodles for a week so that I can buy a dress or a pair of shoes on sale. You don't make me feel bad about my choices. Number six, you allow me to be my outgoing, bubbly self. You don't try to shut me down or take over a conversation or disallow me to be me. You love me the way I am. Number seven, you acknowledge that I am as funny as fuck. Yeah. Number eight. I know that if I tell you a secret, that you will keep my confidence always. That's a big one. I also expect the same out of me towards a friend. Keeping someone's confidence, because your word is all you have, it's your integrity. Number nine, you support my endeavors, you applaud my efforts, and you believe in what matters to me, because I matter to you. And the last one, you love me unconditionally because life is tough and we all mess up at times, but at the end of the day, I know that you are here for me as I'm here for you. So if you're a friend of my life, you've uh, mastered these 10 steps and are keeping to them and I'm sticking to my word and you're sticking to your word. Friendship is the, the most important gift we have in our life. We have our family and we have our friends and true friends are the best gifts that we have you know they're really there's nothing like knowing that someone has your back they they tr you can trust your heart with them and my friends have become such an anchor for me in LA because I'm very close to my family who live in Canada and as boyfriends are well where are they they're sort of like ships that pass in the night anyway I'm waiting for that big old ocean liners to just land and stay docked for a while, you know? But in the meantime, you have to have yourself, your happiness. So if things aren't working in your life, even with your friends, but important things like your health, if you need to change things, you make your list, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to fix? Your romantic relationships, your work relationships. You spend a lot of time at work. Why are we working in places or with people that make us flip and miserable? No. Time to switch it up. Anyway, we've been through a lot in 20, 2021. It's been starting a little challenging. So try to clean out your house right now and be the best you can be moving forward. On that note, happy Wine Dale Wednesday. And you've always got wine and a smile. Smiling is really quite contagious, you know. You put a smile on your face. Even if no one can see with the mask on right now, it makes you feel better. And if you do happen to be driving your car and someone's smiling, you smile them and wave, let them cut in front of you, chances are the smile will hit you back. Anyway, have a good week, everybody. Stay positive, stay happy. Put on some good old music from whatever generation this is.